This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. To see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Let's begin the sample. When we install Exchange 2013, we can install certain roles. And those roles define the function that that server is going to perform in our Exchange environment. Now, Exchange 2013 has three roles, mailbox server role, client access server role, and edge transport server role. The edge transport server role was actually added with Exchange 2013 Service Pack 1. So this is nice. It's actually a bit more simple than previous versions of Exchange, like Exchange 2007 and Exchange 2010, where we had five roles. So the first role is going to be the mailbox server role. This is definitely the most critical role. What it does is it processes, renders, and stores the data. So this is where our emails actually live. So we're sending emails throughout our organization. They're stored on our mailbox server. So if we lost our mailbox server, we would lose those emails. Now clients, like Outlook for example, don't actually connect directly to the mailbox server. They connect to the client access server. What the client access server does is it has protocols, SMTP, unified messaging, call routing, and it connects to the mailbox server for the client. So the client, like Outlook, connects to the client access server, then the client access server sees that request, connects to the appropriate mailbox server to normally retrieve the emails that are stored on the mailbox server. So the client access server handles all client requests by authenticating and routing the request, the request to the correct mailbox server. It also handles email routing between Exchange servers and the outside world. So if we open up our Outlook and we send an email to somebody else that's not in our organization, like uh, Joe Blow at Hotmail.com, well, the client access server role is going to help that email get out to the Internet. And then we have our Edge Transport Server role. Again, this was added with Exchange 2013 Service Pack 1. This acts as an SMTP gateway. What that means is it handles email coming in from the Internet. It can also help send email out to the Internet. This way, let's say uh, Joe Blow at Hotmail.com replies back, and that email has to get into our Exchange server and eventually get to our mailbox server. Well, we don't want a direct connection normally to our client access server role and our mailbox server role from out on the Internet. So the email will actually be sent to our edge transport server, which will be in normally what's called a DMZ. It's kind of a secure area of our network that if it has a virus or something like that, it doesn't affect our internal network. And in addition, this edge transport server role can do things like virus checking and spam checking before it gets to our internal servers, which are our client access servers and our mailbox servers. Now, in order for our Exchange environment to function properly, we need the mailbox server role and the client access server role. Those two are necessary. The edge transport server role isn't necessary, but it's something we normally want to use. But we could also use a third-party SMTP gateway out there, and something else that accepts the mail, does some virus or spam checking, and then sends it to our internal client access server, which would then forward that email to the correct mailbox server. So let's take a look at this. We've got the internet out here. We've got our external DNS, which we'll talk about a little bit. External users, so everybody out there on the internet. We've got our firewall that protects our network. We've got our DMZ, or demilitarized zone, that we have servers that are normally not part of our uh, domain or our internal network. But these servers communicate with our external users or external mail servers directly through a firewall. And then in order to communicate back to our internal servers, the edge transport server here, for example, would then send it back through the firewall and down into our internal network. So here's our internal network. We've got our desktops, our laptops, all of our internal users. And then here we've got a client access server role server and a mailbox server role server. So let's take a simple example here. I'm Bob Smith. I open up my desktop. I'm on my internal network. Open up Outlook and I can see my emails. So here's my emails. So what happened when I opened up my Outlook? 
so here I am, Bob Smith, opened up my Outlook. What happened was it connected to the client access server, Outlook did, and then the client access server connected to the appropriate mailbox server to get the all the emails, all the data, send that information back to the client access server, then the client access server sent it back to me at my desktop. Now let's take another example. An external user sends an email to Bob Smith here on our internal network. That email travels through our firewall here, through our DMZ, hits our edge transport server role. The email gets looked at maybe for viruses, uh, does some spam checking. Everything looks good, so the edge transport server role sends that email to the client access server role. The client access server role connects to the appropriate mailbox server role and forwards that email over to it and it gets stored. So now when Bob Smith connects via Outlook, connects to the client access server, the client access server connects to the mailbox server and returns that email information, all of his emails, to the client access server. The client access server sends it back to Bob Smith and Bob Smith sees it in his Outlook. Now this part about the mailbox server and the client access server being separate servers might be kind of confusing, but the good news is normally we actually want these two roles to be on the same server. So it really makes things simple. So our network would actually look something like this. We just have this be our exchange server here and it would have our client access server role and our mailbox server role on it. But whether we install these roles on the same physical server or two separate servers, they're gonna function the same. So there are separate processes that are running for the client access server role on this server that accept the connection from our Outlook client, for example, and then those processes will talk talk to the mailbox server role processes on this server, and then the mailbox server processes will talk back to the client access server processes, and then talk back to the desktop or the client.